There's a I was I was watching uh, this this video on YouTube about car companies that failed, but not really. And one of them is Elio Motors, and they've been promising a product for the last decade: a three-wheeled, hyper fuel economy, two-person commuter vehicle. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's a, th a motorcycle, an enclosed motorcycle. And um, their their unique feature is was that uh, with the vehicle when you sign the vehicle they give you a line of credit and whatever you buy in gas they just take let's say you spent twenty dollars at the pump they add another twenty dollars on your tar on your uh, on your bill and the reality is it's a motorcycle and you would only ever put like five dollars in but you're getting 85 miles per gallon so you spend ten dollars and it's like oh ten dollars and I went this many miles it actually feels like a normal car for the first like five years until you pay it off, assuming you drive, you know, 12,000 miles a year or something like that. And it pays it off really quick because you could buy one of these things for, you know, $9,000 if they were actually in production. They're, he's been met with nothing but, like, obstacles. But this is a car that just by using would pay for itself. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they had orchestrated some kind of arrangement with Pet Boys to provide all of the uh, <clears throat> parts and labor for for, main, for maintenance, because Pet Boys is a parts shop and they have a, a labor department where they'll do you know work on vehicles. So it's like there's this really interesting arrangement that's worked out. And they've got everything they need. They just keep running into like regulatory issues, and a lot of them are like. Safety concerns raised by the, the big, the real automakers who are making full-size cars that would just crush one of these things and flatten somebody because mm -hmm. it's a motorcycle. But this is like a recession car, right? We might actually start seeing things like this. I mean, the whole car industry is kind of collapsing. I mean, it, the only reason it came about was because regulators stepped in to destroy the train industry. Yeah. That's that's reality. That's yeah. fact. Well, yeah, mass transit was, was incredible. <laughs> it in was this it country. was fantastic. Yeah, and in the Indiana, reason, there were trains going all over the state. You yep. could ride almost anywhere. That's where those, those leftover tracks are from. Oh no! And this is where again, you know, <laughs> regulation is great when it works for the people, but when it works against the people, it's not great. So. When we look at what regulation did to the economy via protection for automobiles, it destroyed our economy and, by proxy, we're wouldn't destroying it, the planet. Wouldn't it have been cool to, like, be able to go to Indianapolis for, like, 75 cents? On a monorail? Yeah. Like, you just go there because you got to go shopping, and then when you <laughs> go home, you just cart whatever it is you bought on, like, a dolly. I mean, I I still do not understand why monorails are not the norm when you have an elevated train. Why is China leading the path to like that kind of <laughs> right <laughs> of yeah. mass transit? Why is it that China? Why is it China doing this? Why aren't we? We have so many. Old, it's, well, we, I know it's because we have this old infrastructure and they, we want to keep the using it because it still works and and it and it costs a lot to build a new infrastructure and. and but it also costs a lot to stay on the old infrastructure and destroy the planet in the process, yeah. which is what is not being taken into this calculation. Oh, and the is the like, incredible industry that exists to to uh, to maintain the existing train uh, network and infrastructure, because <laughs> they have these incredible uh, systems that pull up the old rails and move the old ties and then lay down entire 50-foot sections of track. And then they have a machine that welds it together in those locations and smooths it off in one one machine. It's all in one thing. It just rides Jesus. the track down and lays the track as it goes. And if it has to build in a section that, that does the, uh, the track change thing, they just lay some tracks over it, and then its computer goes and cuts the things necessary where it needs to make the, the over, overpass Holy junction shit. shit. It's incredible. Like... They, it's all machined. It's automated. There's like mm -hmm. an operator who probably has to go through some really advanced machine operator training to, to, to use this stuff. Probably an engineering degree of some sort. And <clears throat> this is how they build trains or build railroads now. It's not like it's not a bunch of dudes swinging <laughs> fucking hammers. Yeah. There's no, there's, there aren't jobs in that industry 
it's highly skilled. And I feel like, you know, there's, it uses back to what I was saying about how, what if we deployed, like, our uh, nationalized uh, employment system to build infrastructure? We could build monorails or maglevs or mm -hmm. whatever advanced technology mass transit so quickly all at once all over the entire country yep. because every state has some uh, branch that where people sign up to join the nationalized employment system yeah that's what it should be reformulated and reoutfitted for there's got to be a way um, it only makes perfect sense really national employment um, we got to and I'm trying to work out so it's like NEWB S. National Employment um, Works Bureau um, S. Works Bureau and New Noobs. <laughs> <laughs> National Employment <laughs> Works uh, Bureau and stuff. Stuff. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah.